Here I am on the homepage for the Movie Database, an open database of movie information similar to IMDb. Like IMDb, we can type a query term like hardware and get a list of matching movies. We're going to use this as the basis of an example of how to interact with a typical RESTful API. In fact, most of the information provided by the MovieDB website is just a web-based user interface on top of the RESTful API that we can also use as programmers. From the TMDB homepage, we can navigate to information about the API, and we'll just follow this link to the full API documentation. This page is typical of the documentation provided for a RESTful API. Down the right-hand side of the page, there's a list of all the different service calls or methods that this RESTful API supports. We're going to use two of these in our example. The search functionality to identify one or more movies matching a particular search term, and then we'll use a different call to retrieve detailed information about one of the specific movies matched by our initial query. Recall that a RESTful web API is one that receives requests over HTTP and returns results in a markup such as XML or JSON. There's usually three things you need to know to make a RESTful API call. First, you need to have a developer API key that authenticates you. In the case of the movie database, you can get a key for free by signing up for an account on their homepage. Some services charge you to get an API developer key, but in most cases, the only purpose of the key is to track each user's usage and prevent abuse. We'll use my API key for this example, but be sure to sign up for and use your own key for your own work. The second thing you need is the base URI of the endpoint that the API is served from. The base URI is api.themoviedb.org slash three. So any RESTful request URI to the MovieDB will begin with this string. The third thing you need to know is the API call that you want to make and which parameters it might take. So let's start by looking at the documentation for the search API call. The documentation shows that we have to construct a URI that calls search slash movie and that we have to provide two parameters, our developer API key and the query string that we want to match against. With that in mind, here's an example URI that uses the search functionality. You can see that our URI begins with API the moviedb.org, that's the RESTful endpoint, and following the documentation, this is the name of the method that we want to use, and we've added the two required parameters, the query string, and we're going to search for the string hardware as we did before, and the API key. We're going to issue this API request using curl, a useful command line utility for exploring and experimenting with RESTful APIs. We issue our API request, and we get our results back in JSON format. But they're a little bit hard to read, so instead of looking at them in raw text, we can also issue this request directly from a browser, since after all, it's just HTTP, and we can use a Firefox plugin called JSON View that gives us a nicely formatted view of JSON responses from a RESTful service endpoint. So we'll copy and paste that exact same URI into Firefox with the JSON View plugin installed. And now we can see a much more nicely formatted and indented version of the results. In particular, we see that the results slot of the resulting JSON object is an array that has two elements in it. So apparently two different movies matched our title string hardware. And here they are. If we had made this request from our application, our next step would be to parse this JSON object. But for now, we're just exploring the API. To show another example API call, let's get detailed information about one of these two matching movies. If we go back to the API documentation page, and we look at the documentation for the movies API call, we can see that we can get basic movie information for a specific movie ID. Going back to the result that we just got, we can see that each of our two matching movies has an ID associated with it. So all we have to do is construct a URI that queries for that particular ID, and again, provides the required parameter API key along with it. So let's manually construct the request to look at more detailed information for the movie hardware, whose ID is 11309. I'm just going to modify in place this original request URI. We're going to call the movie method. We're going to provide the movie ID. And then the only parameter we need after the question mark is our API key. And we can see that we now have detailed information, like an overview of the movie, and pointers to other resources online associated with the movie. You might wonder what happens if you give an invalid API key. The nice thing about exploring an API using a web browser or the curl command line tool is we can try these experiments. Suppose we give an invalid API key and try the request. 
we can see a JSON object with a status code of 7 and a message indicating a bad API key. So in this screencast, we've seen an introduction to how to use a typical RESTful API by knowing the endpoint of the API, a list of the methods supported by the API, what required parameters have to be associated with the URI, and a developer-specific API key in order to make the calls.